for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Welcome to another episode of Hacks and Hobbies. In this episode, I'm just going to go over some of the updates, spring time going on, what's what's happening with the podcast, what's happening with beekeeping, cycling, whatnot, and there's been a lot going on for the past few months. I have been kind of off the radar for personal reasons and um, trying to collect myself and figure out what are some of the next steps that I am planning on doing and taking and going out there and making a name for myself. I mean, I've got a name for myself called Super Genade for the past 20 years, and uh, it's been pretty exciting. And just continuing to create content, interview amazing guests, and bring them to you here on the podcast. I've been taking a lot of courses and learning to enhance my mindset and basically just be a better podcaster. And one thing that I have... I had lost sight of was the value and the information that I was bringing to you and it's been it's been kind of non-existent for the past couple of months I'm trying to pick it back up uh here in May and I, if I look at my release schedule it's it looks pretty bad March was pretty good with uh four five episodes updated and then February we had some good run but April is like complete shot. Like, what, where did, what happened to Jan- Janaid? Just to update on what's been going on, I left my job back in February and I've been focusing on building and working on a mobile video production course. Now, this video production course is, is aimed entirely directly at iOS users, iPhone users, since that is the only device I use myself. I don't want to be like, oh, I can tell you how you can uh, use video production on an Android device when I don't own one myself. Now, I've been looking at Marcus Lee, Super Saf, and other, other uh, Jonathan Morrison, these amazing folks out there on the YouTubes and the internet and how they do a review on all the cool stuff that's coming out. I wish I could do that. I totally wish I could, but I'm not there yet. And how do I get there? Well, I I need to start talking. I need to start documenting and putting it out on the podcast. It is my one way to get information out to the audience. So some of the cool things that's been happening and that I've been involved in. First of all, I had the opportunity to visit attend a work sh- workshop uh, that was put together by VIP Film and TV Summit and these guys are amazing they they do they've been doing a lot of video and short films and feature films out here in the DMV area and uh, good friend Ron Newcomb he had uh, put together this VIP Film and TV Summit where he brought on industry professionals that teach you what's happening so in this in this um event i got to attend two really cool events uh really cool workshops one the first one was with tom malloy he is he has written a book called bankroll and he's been in the film industry for the past 20 plus years and he's uh managed to raise 25 million dollars for his films get him out there to the Hollywood studio. The other gentleman was John C. Lee, and he's been the producer for a long time, having the opportunity and to work with Steven Spielberg back in the days. So lots of lots of amazing information all around movie production and how to raise money and where to raise money how you should set up your movie when you are creating the movie. So that was really awesome. Lots of good information. I took a ton of notes. 
And then I had the opportunity to talk with Tom Malloy and I asked him, hey, would you like to be a guest on the podcast? So he's one of the guests that I got to interview. Uh, next day of this amazing weekend, I had the opportunity to visit TEDx Ashburn. I got to experience TEDx in a totally new way. I mean, we are all used to watching TEDx videos on, you know, on YouTube or, or on TEDx website or on your phone. And those are great motivational speeches and talks. But it's really crazy when you get to experience one in person. And after the event, I went up to each speaker, told them how amazing of a job they did, and asked them, hey, would you like to come on to the podcast and be a guest uh, on the podcast? I had the opportunity to, to bring two of the speakers onto the podcast, namely Holly Sean and Candice Fati. They're both amazing speakers. One talking about the neuro, the neurology, your brain, and how your brain works. And the other one talks about using that brain, your communication ability, or communicating with animals, communicating with other, our pets, and whatnot. So that was really exciting talks, and they'll be coming down the pike as well. There's a lot of guests that I've got lined up for you guys uh, coming onto the podcast, and and. I can't wait to share their story and their journey with you guys. It's been very busy April, very busy May time. I mean, I'm looking at all these dates and when I interviewed these folks and uh, a lot of them were in March. I had a lot of interviews in April and, and May has been going pretty good so far. I just uh, talked to uh, somebody today and... He's got an awesome story as well, and I can't wait to interview him this coming Thursday. So going back to what's been happening, and for this, I'm going to have to pull up my calendar because there's a lot of updates, and my calendar is one of the best places to see what I did in the past few weeks. Let me cue that up. All right, so I had the TED Talk, visited the VIP Film Summit. Now, the VIP Film Summit was amazing. It was a whole weekend process or a whole weekend engagement. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the next two days. And all of these events happened in March. So we're going back two months in the past to catch you up on what's been going on. Some of the other things, activities with kids uh, that are also coming up or has been happening is, you know, we've got my Younger son, Musa, into soccer. He's playing soccer outdoors, and he's totally loving it. My older son is back into back in flag football, and he's loving that as well. Uh, getting stronger, getting faster, you know, catching and hiking and 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 uh, pitching and whatnot. So so far, they've had so my older son. So far, he's had a couple of football games, and um, it's been basically a tie. I had the opportunity to again work with my good friend John Meadows and he was like hey I'm doing a totally new high-end photography high-end portrait high-end portrait photos and I would like to you know bring you on and do some photos for you for free I was like dude really I would love to and he said you know you've got that you've got that look with the gray hair and whatnot I was like yeah, I like that look too. He's like, if you had, so when I when I visited, he's like, if you had dyed your hair in any shape or form, you would not be my first pick. So I was like, all right, my decision to not color my hair was really good. So beginning of, beginning of April, um, film summits, TEDx talk, photo shoot, as as well as the the screening of our first short film. This short film was all around, this short film was our month of March where um, a few of us got together and participated in Make a Movie in a Month where we then decided, okay, this is going to be a story about beekeepers. And it was an idea that was that, but that my buddy Shako came up with because he was like, you know, you're a beekeeper. We should learn more about beekeepers. So the short film was all around beekeepers. 
And I've, I've seen a lot of the movies and documentaries are focused on the bees, the bees themselves, and there are some beautiful, beautiful films. In fact, NPR put something out um, recently that was super, super amazing story time with bees. All right, so that was uh, first week of April. So the second week of April, I had the opportunity to speak with Lala Smith, Chris Mack, and Mark Metry. And I've been trying to get on Mark's calendar for some time, but we had, we've been uh, running into some problems uh, of timekeeping. So I finally reached out to him through Messenger and that was an awesome uh, conversation talking with Mark Metry and learning his story. So the last week of April was pretty exciting where I got to one, meet somebody brand new. Jordan Gross had an interview with Holly, Sean, Jake Jordan, and Bonnie Marie Williams. And these three were some of the fun conversations I've had in a while. And then that same night I drove out to North North Carolina. I drove out to Boone, North Carolina for Velocipede Spring Camp 2019. Now, what is the Velocipede Spring Camp 2019? Well, being a cyclist and being part of a team, Velocipede, for the past three years and being a sponsor on there as well. In fact, for the next 2018, 2019 and 2020 jerseys, Hacks and Hobbies is a sponsor on the team Velocipede. Uh, and we can't wait to get the new jerseys uh, later this summer. Super exciting, super exciting. So the spring camp is really to help train the teammates and get ready for spring races. And it has been a staple to have a few camps during the year where you were just focusing on climbing, going the distance, and just getting the body ripped and prepared for races to come. And it's it also shows camaraderie as well as feeling that we've got this. We've got the support of the team. And abs- I have not been practicing at all, so I offered to be a SAG support and be in a car next to our riders. So if anybody needed... Uh, some water, if anybody needed to shed some layers, toss them in the car. Do they want to put a layer on, they can get that from the car. Um, they want to, you know, get a puncture fix. They want to take a break. The car is available. We had uh, four bike racks on the back that enabled them to place the bikes there and drive in and climb those distances. I think we had uh, one or two incidents where the tires were flat and we were not able to fix it. Um, so we, so that teammate had to, you know, got, got to ride with me and even drive me sometimes so I could capture some footage, some videos and uh, photos of the riders. So that was, that was quite, quite exciting uh, weekend. We had three days of riding. Friday was brutal because um, it was raining the whole day, the whole day raining with um, 10 of 10 of the riders decided to say, yes, we're going to ride in this rain. We came out here so far. It took us about six hours to drive down there. So they're like, we're not going to waste a day just because it's raining. Plus, everybody knew it was going to rain. So everybody was fully prepared and brought their gear um, for the event, for the camp. Saturday and Sunday were much better. Saturday was an amazing day, clearest day. We had a total of 13 teammates riding, and then we had a local rider as well. So we had a total of 14 people riding bikes, and I was trailing along the back, making sure that everybody has what they need and keep on going. So it's pretty exciting. As a listener to this podcast, I appreciate you guys. And... I've talked so many times about the platform that I use, and that's Anchor. Anchor makes it so much easier for me to publish my podcast to several different platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, 
Google Podcasts, Spotify, and so many more. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors too, so you can get paid to podcast. I absolutely love Anchor, and I used to record my podcast, Hacks and Hobbies, that you're listening to right now. I love the ease of use of the Anchor app and the way that I can publish the podcast. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Sunday, there wasn't much writing. We had five team members um, decided to do a short run where they wanted to do the climb all the way up to the camp ha- campsite. Now, most of the times, what happens is we would start riding from the campsite, but since there was so much gravel and, and the grade was crazy, 15%, uh, we all, all of the rides started from the close by shopping center. So we would load up the cars with the bikes and the teammates, and then we would drive down to the shopping center and then start our rides from there. So on Sunday, they were like, you know, we, we, we have to ride from the campsite because that's, that's all camp's about. So five of the brave gentlemen, they took their bikes, they walked down the gravel path where the street started and started their ride, descend. And I was like, dude, I will come do sack support for you because why not? So I went down with them, I, so I followed them along, I went down with them and followed them as they rode the bikes, and and uh, one of the teammates, he was like, you know, I'll come ride with you, so you don't, have to, you, you don't have to be driving alone by yourself. So he came with me, and then we were just following them along, and he was like, dude, I should have brought my bike, it's so easy, but you know, that's what happens, that's what's camp, you have either regrets or you have either awesome experiences so that was camp uh february um so that was camp april 26 27 28 awesome experience then we came back on sunday night and the next week or the first week of may and and last week of april combined together because you have two days i had the opportunity to speak with eleanor bick she is Elbdot on Twitter, and she is an amazing, amazing illustrator. Some of the work that I saw of her on her Tumblr page and her Twitter was recreation of Pokemon animals, Pokemon monsters in her own style. And I was like, holy smokes, this is so much more detailed than what we're used to looking on the Pokemon Go app or on the cartoon and whatnot. So that was super exciting to uh, see. So I invited her to be on the podcast and she's like, absolutely. So she was in on Monday, the 29th, got to interview with her and learn her story and how she had so much support from her parents, so much support from her mom and her mom being an illustrator and her now being third generation illustrator, I was like, wow, I see a pattern here. I see lots of good stuff that will get you in. Like, this is why you do what you do because passion plus experience from your parents, you know, it's totally brings you together. Now, one thing you you probably be thinking about is, wait, you were at camp on Friday the 26th isn't that the day Avengers came out? I mean, I'm a huge fan of Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I was like, yeah, well, I've got to wait for my kids. I've got to wa- watch the movie with my kids, with my wife. And so we decided that Friday the 3rd at 4 p.m. is when we will get to go and watch Marvel's Avengers Endgame. And, dude, I have to tell you, it was 
one of the best movies I have seen in a very, very long time. I was just mind blown. It was it was that good. It was it was really really exciting. And um, we're almost up with the time where we meet up to what's happening today. And uh, last week I had the opportunity to spring Jordan Gross on the interview and talk to him about his journey. I got to speak with somebody brand new, Kirk Westwood. Uh, through LinkedIn, and he found my user experience exciting as well as my passion in video. And he's like, we do video, you do UX, let's collaborate. So I definitely hope to collaborate with him and uh, excited to see where that journey goes. Then we had um, some more interviews on Thursday the night, as well as talking with, oh, delivering some honey. So let's now move on to now that now that I've caught up with how many interviews I've had in the past just few weeks, it's been pretty exciting. Let's come to the topic of beekeeping and what's been happening in that arena. So two weeks ago, or maybe it's almost three weeks ago, I was talking to my mentor, and he's like, "Hey, did you have you done a check yet?" Have you done an inspection yet? And I was like, you know, good question. I have not done an inspection in a while. And he's like, well, you're supposed to be inspecting every seven days during springtime. I was like, really? I probably might have forgotten because I remember him passing out the information uh, at class time back in 2018. And I took that paper and I was like, all right, I'm going to put all of this in the calendar. Of course, I didn't do it for this year. If I had done, I would have known that I need to inspect every seven days. Anyhow, long story short, I went to the hive immediately that day. And I noticed that there were a total of 13 swarm cells. I was like, oh my God, mentor mine, Nate, I've got 13 swarm cells. What do I do? He's like, well, you better split your hive immediately if you don't want them swarming because I'm sure your hive already swarmed. I was like, no, that's impossible. He's like, well, go in and check if you still have the queen. So I went in there and I looked and I couldn't find the queen. I couldn't find the original queenie. So I was like, all right, you're right. Yes, I did probably had a swarm happen one of these days and and I don't know where the bees went or maybe they didn't go I don't know it's it's so crazy it could be that the bee that the queen bee died right if cuz that could be that could happen too like maybe the queen bee died and that's why the queen that's why they were preparing to set up the cells or swarm cells so I don't know I'm I don't know what what happened so I, I immediately emptied out the old Saskatraz hive because Saskatraz did not make it. Alexandria made it. So I was able to split Alexandria into three separate hives. I've got, uh, now I have three hives and I've got to name them and I haven't named them yet. So I still have the Alexandria and I have Alexandria part one and Alexandria part two. Um, I don't know much about Alexandria. Maybe it could be something in that area. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just thinking, thinking out loud. Okay. So the bees are doing good. They haven't swarmed. At least I haven't seen them swarm at all. And they look pretty good. Um, I will be inspecting the hives um, probably this weekend to see how they're doing. It's been pretty cold um, past this weekend, so haven't been able to go in there to see what's going on. Another thing that I recently got in the mail was a flow hive. Like finally, I got the flow hive, and it's it's because my mentor said, you know, we still have six weeks of nectar flow, so if you have a flow hive, might as well put that in there because that's gonna get them that's gonna get them filled up. So, uh. I built it up, I stained the box, and I was like, all right, I need to put it in. When I went to go put it on, 
I noticed that the telescoping cover would not fit on top of the flow hive, mainly because there's knobs that you could pull off and to access the flow frames to to enable them or to disable them. And I was like, oh no, I need a gable top rooftop or gable gable top roof cover or gable top cover. Sorry, gable roof top cover is what I needed. And I didn't have one. I was like, okay, I might have to either purchase one or build one. And Honeyflow or Flowhive was not selling one. And I found one on Better Bee for $75. And I was like, I'm not spending $75 right now. So I ended up building one and it's still, I still have a roof to put on it. So we'll see when the roof gets put on. But then I realized, you know, I don't really need a gable top. If I put the super directly above the hive and then and put another box on top, that's where the top box top can go and the telescoping cover can go and, and I, I don't need that extra thing. So that's what I ended up doing. And, or I could have just built another shim and just put the telescoping cover on top of it, but I didn't have the materials to do build, build the shim. I did end up starting on a gable, gable top roof cover or gable roof cover top, whatever, however you say that name. And, um, so that hopefully I'll be done with it in the next couple of days, depending on what's happening. So now this week is pretty exciting. Uh, now we're all basically all caught up to what's happening today, Tuesday the 14th. And I hope to get this podcast uploaded on the 14th um, and uh, get it rolling. So tomorrow, Wednesday the 15th, I'm looking to, I got selected to be in front of a TV. Sorry, I got selected to be part of a retirement ad video, a retirement ad. So that's going to be pretty exciting and um, we'll see how that goes. So tomorrow I'm going to be up in, up down East Coast and Virginia Beach checking out the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, so that's going to be pretty, pretty exciting. Um, something that uh, I didn't know I was ever going to be on camera. I mean, I've been on camera talking to you guys, um, but I haven't been on camera for somebody else. So this, this is going to be pretty interesting and exciting. So there you have it. Those are some of the updates uh, and what I have been up to in the past three weeks. And uh, well, from the podcast side, that's what I've been up to. The other areas that I've been working on is I finished the video production, the mobile video production chapter for Insights for Success book that's coming out uh, later in the summer. And um, it's going to the publisher anytime now. I think all the editing is getting done. It's coming very close and i um, super excited for that. And that's going to tie into the, the course that I'm building around mobile video production and a monetization model that I'm thinking about that my coach helped me figure out like, dude, you could totally do this. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll uh, definitely spend the time to put that together and, uh, make it happen. So that's it. That's the update for you guys. Uh, I, I'm, I hope that you've enjoyed the past few episodes, uh, over on hacks and hobbies. Uh, some of the ones were around growing your business. And, um, we got to talk with Mark Ford on how to grow your business by utilizing the best kept business secret. Then we also got to talk with Ferdinand Brock, how to use the serving mindset to grow your business. And then of course, uh, last week, we also had Michael J. Lyons, how to believe in yourself and bring daydreams into reality. He's got a book out called set yourself free, uh, and he's working on a new book. So some cool, really cool, um, interviews that are on the podcast that you can check out. And again, thank you so much for subscribing, listening, 
sharing and um, sending me feedback. Yeah, you know, I'm always looking for feedback. I'm absolutely honored that you take the time to listen to the po podcast and send me information that uh, can help me make the podcast better. Again, I'll be sure to make this more of a regular habit because I have not been doing that. And that's mainly because I don't have that commute anymore. I don't have the two hours sitting in traffic anymore, but I also have a lot less time now that I'm home because my kids are home at 4 p.m. So 4 p.m. onwards, I'm not sitting in front of a computer. I'm going out there playing with the kids, um, you know, playing some uh, badminton, doing some, throwing some football or kick some soccer around. Uh, so that's been pretty exciting. And as, of course, going out there and riding on the bikes with them has been taking a lot of my time. So thank you so much for your time and listening to the episode. I look forward to sharing more of the interviews that are coming down the pike and listening to your comments and to your criticism. I love criticism, so please send it, send it my way. Till the next episode. Thanks and have a good day. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on HacksandHobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today.